in a project with the aim of sending a person safely to space and back again, there are thousands of things that can go wrong. This video is about a small detail on the main parachutes, namely the loops that tie the suspension lines to the parachute. Hello Rocket fans and welcome to the world's only crowdfunded human spaceflight project. For a long time I was struggling with a simple question when it comes to making the loop on the suspension lines. These suspension lines are braided and with a hollow core and in short the loops are made by finger trapping the end of the line into itself. The problem is that the most typical way of securing the trapped piece of line from sliding free is to stitch the line to keep the core line in place. But for me, in my production setup, it is easier to use a self-locking method, which I have shown how I do in another video. My concern has been that I didn't know for sure which of the two methods caused the least reduction of strength on the suspension lines. And that's where our partners in adventure there at the Technical University at Delft swoop in. We have a long history of helping each other and they have definitely helped us out a few times before in times of uncertainty. This time they were able to help us with a tensile strength test evaluating which of a range of different combinations were better. So when it comes to locking up the ends of the parachute suspension lines in particular. So what I did was to make several samples of the end loops with a range of lines with different combinations of lengths of finger trapping, self-locked or stitched ends, and we even tried with both Kevlar and Spectra as suspension line. Then I uh, had the sample sent to Delft, where the recovery team of DARE performed the tensile strength tests. Now remember that this test was purely a comparison between the different types of securing the finger trap from getting loose. But for reference, the uh, spectral line used in this test is rated for handling 1000 pounds, which is equivalent to around 4400 newtons. In the first graph, we uh, look at spectral lines and the difference between the ones with a self-locked end and the stitched end. On these, we see that within the uncertainty, they break at basically similar force at an average of 3.7 kN. It's not surprising that this number is lower than what the lines are rated for, since modifying the ends will weaken the material no matter how we make the loops. The interesting thing is to notice that the stitched closing method has a bigger uncertainty and we see why that is when we drill down and look at the differences when we include the length of the core. So in the second graph we see the two long core combinations having a breaking force at around 4.6 kN where the short locked combination breaks at around 2.9 kN and the short stitched version breaks at around 2 kN. So now it becomes clear that the strength of the loop depends on the length of the core and even more so that the stitched version is actually more vulnerable to changes in the length of the core than the self-locked version is. And just to clarify, in this test the short core is around 7 cm and the long core is 10 cm long. This opens up a new question of how significant the change in core length is. For this, we can look at the third graph that shows the combined overview of long and short cores, which we can now see is a more important factor to take into account. So, what started out as a question where I was concerned about which method I should use to lock the ends, actually proved to me that it was more important to remember to use longer cores in the finger trap than which locking method I used. So for me the conclusion is that it is perfectly fine to use a self-locking method, but I have to remember to make the core of the finger trap long enough for the loop to be as strong as possible. Thank you for watching and please consider donating to the project to help us sending a person to space, either as a one-time support or as a recurring payment. Thank you very much.